It is time now for Morning Rounds, and joining us are CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook and CBS News Contributor Dr. Holly Phillips. First up this week, it could be the biggest treatment breakthrough in decades for type 1 diabetes. Three million Americans suffer from the disease. John? Vanita, this week researchers said they may have developed a way to help patients with diabetes produce their own insulin using stem cells. When I wake up in the morning, I immediately check my sugar. 13-year-old Finn Darty uses a blood sugar monitor and insulin pump, both attached to his body, to keep his glucose in check. Darty was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when he was two years old. Pretty much my earliest memories have been with diabetes, and so I don't really know any other way. Scientist Doug Melton knows exactly what Finn's life is like. Both of Melton's children, now in their 20s, have type 1 diabetes. He's devoted his career to using stem cells to find a cure. His research is a leap forward. The idea itself isn't so complicated, but the practice of it turned out to be difficult. It took us more than 15 years to reach the goal that we've recently achieved. In type 1 diabetes, the immune system attacks and destroys the insulin-producing cells of the pancreas. Melton's team turned human stem cells into insulin-producing cells in the lab and transferred them into diabetic mice. The cells functioned like healthy ones, regulating the mice's sugar with no need for insulin injections. Six months later, their blood sugar was still under control. What's now very important to know is how will they behave inside a person. And so a little bit of hmm. light from... Melton will be working to test the treatment in humans as soon as possible. It's fun to think about a day when people won't be using syringes or insulin pumps anymore that they'll have a natural mechanism of their body's own cells making the insulin they need. Why is that natural component so important versus insulin? Well, the insulin injections, and even if you have an insulin pump, it's just not natural, and you can get uh, too much insulin, and then that drives your blood sugar down, you get hypoglycemic. There can be too little insulin, you have to worry exactly about what you're eating. With the stem cells, it would be natural. So the sugar level would go up, and the, the insulin-producing cells would respond to that and put out just enough insulin. So it's, it's really the way it should be, much more naturally. John, how far away are human trials in this? Dr. Mel we asked that, of course, to Dr. Melton. He said it's going to be a few years, but I, I, I'll bet on Dr. Melton. I, I, I guess that's not my job to predict the future, but this is a man. Who, both of his kids developed diabetes. He changed his career from developmental biology to doing this, and if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be him. All right, interesting. Also this week, a new warning about a hidden and potentially dangerous stimulant. A study found 12 out of 14 supplements for weight loss, workouts, and brain enhancement contain AMP citrate. Scientists say it's a chemical cousin to an ingredient the FDA banned because it increased the risk of a heart attack or seizure. This stimulant has never been tested in humans. Holly, just how dangerous is it? You know, Anthony, unfortunately, that's the million dollar question, and we don't know. That's because supplements really aren't regulated in the same way that prescription drugs are, so they don't have to undergo extensive human testing to show that they're safe and effective. What we do know, though, is that this stimulant is really closely related to one called DMAA. They're almost the same. And DMAA was recalled in 2012 after dozens of adverse events, heart attacks, strokes, seizures, and even death. So it's reasonable to think that this might carry some of the same risks. So then is it legal to take something that is legally banned and then just change one component of it and put it right back on the market? It's totally legal, and that really represents, I think, a flaw in the system. Um, manufacturers of, of the supplements can take a, a banned and dangerous chemical, change it just in the tiniest way, essentially enough to rename it, and put it right back on store shelves. Now, the FDA can then pull it back off of the shelves, but, you know, that's really not ideal because at that point, people have been exposed and maybe they've even been hurt by some of the drugs. John, a lot of people look to these supplements to help them lose weight. Are, are any of them safe? Well, I always tell my patients, show me the supplement. No. Because I don't know what's in it. Bring it in, let me look at the ingredients, and if I can't see the ingredients, then you can't take it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no free lunch at the end of the day. Everybody right. wants the miracle pill. They don't want to hear to exercise and eat less. But a lot of these things, especially because they're not FDA regulated, they're, they're treated by the FDA as, as food these supplements, so you don't know what's in them. Yeah. Okay. Well, this week, a 29-year-old newlywed with stage 4 brain cancer is telling the world how she will take her own life on November 1st. Brittany Maynard made a web video. She wants to launch a nationwide campaign promoting death with dignity. 
I plan to be surrounded by my immediate family, which is my husband and my mother and my stepfather and my best friend, who's also a physician, um, and probably not much more people. Um, and I will die upstairs in my bedroom that I share with my husband, um, with my mother and my husband by my side, and pass peacefully with some music that I like in the background. I hope to enjoy however many days I have left on this beautiful earth and spend as much of it outside as I can. Maynard moved from California to Oregon. It's just one of five states that allow terminally ill patients to choose when and where they die. She wants California and other states to pass similar laws. This is obviously very controversial, John. In Oregon, what they have is Death with Dignity, an act called Death with Dignity. What does exactly does it allow? Well, first of all, we are aching for this conversation as a country. Are we ever ready for it? It's begun, but do we ever need it? I took it off the website because the wording is important. Uh, this act allows terminally ill Oregonians to end their lives through the voluntary self-administration of lethal medications expressly prescribed by a physician for that purpose. Now, there are a lot of criteria. For example, the patient has to orally request this mm -hmm. 15 days apart from the attending doctor. Things have to be in, in writing, and there are some other steps. So it's, not, it, you know, it's taken seriously by the system. Holly, which states condone aid in dying? Well, Anthony, you know, Oregon passed the first Death with Dignity Act 17 years ago. Um, it's also authorized in, I have here, Montana, New Mexico, Vermont, and Washington. And there are a couple of organizations that are uh, campaigning for it to be authorized in other states. You know, I will say this is clearly a very controversial issue, but there have been a number of polls that show that the American public is interested in and supports some form of aid in dying. Uh, so I think this is a conversation that is just beginning, as John says, and is very, very much needed. Yeah, it's very important. All right. Doctors at a New York children's hospital used a 3D printer to help save a newborn's life. A two-week-old baby's heart was filled with holes that required complicated surgery. The surgeons printed a model of the heart and used it for practice. That made it possible to fix everything with just one operation instead of several. And finally this week, your DNA may influence your java drinking. A new study has identified the genes responsible for the effect <laughs> that coffee has on your body. The project analyzed two dozen previous studies and the DNA of some 12,000 patients. I've got the java gene. <laughs> More is better. And, and I understand that genetic testing will be coming soon to your local Starbucks. So that, that's right. that would be handy. Yeah, you don't could you get think? all that done at once. I don't, I don't want to know what it says about us. He's tea. I'm coffee. How am I going to handle this coffee? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get that testing. All right, Dr. John LaFouk, Dr. Holly Phillips, thanks so much for being with us this morning.